I'm heading off on a new adventure. This time I'm going to the fjords in Musamid, just outside of Oman. For today, what I want to do is make a nice buttery lobster roll. And I'm going to be using Oman seafood. It's a favorite and classic Oman lobster. So this lobster is very different from our cold North Atlantic lobsters. They're quite large and scary, if I might add. I mean, sometimes I wonder what people <laughs> were thinking when they saw this and said, let's see if it tastes good. And not to mention breaking into them is kind of difficult because they have all this armor. So this is an Oman lobster. There's no claws. There's little tiny ones, but uh, these I wouldn't consider these to be claws. It's mostly the tail. And what happens is uh, over here they serve it warm and uh, they cut the tail open. You can also find them down in the Caribbean. Now we're moving on to the beautiful lobster that I'm kind of partial to because it's uh, North American. Canadian lobster and they have them over here quite a bit. They bring them over all the way from Canada and uh, this guy is very lively so I'm going to get him into um, some water later and that's probably going to be a really nice special treat tonight. So I have the Oman lobster that I already boiled as you see and I've just salted some water like we do in North America and um, put them down into that. So this is already done and I'm taking ch chicken shears because they're quite tough. Um, they have a really strong armor, these Oman lobsters. So uh, with the other lobster, the Canadian lobster, what I usually do is break it open with my hands. There we go. Come on. And, you know, you can do so many things. There's so many recipes with seafood, with lobster, with crab. I just like to showcase the meat. It's so succulent and so sweet that I really don't want to add too much flavor to it, but it is going to be on a nice roll. So I do want to have some nice flavor in there. So I'm just going to break it down the middle. Oh yeah, very nice and tender, really, really nice. And it smells just like our lobster back home. So I'm going to get some nice chops of this down and break up the meat a little bit. I don't want to break it up too much, but I do want to have a nice bite of the lobster meat so you know what it is. And uh, it's pretty distinctive. There you go, let's get that down. I'm gonna get it into a bowl and make a quick little sauce in a second. I got a couple more ingredients. And I want to chop up some chives. And I really like chives with my lobster roll. I just think it's a really nice, mild onion bite. Again, I'm not going in for any strong flavors. There you go, that's lots, perfect. Now, as I said, I'm gonna get a little sauce. So I'm gonna add a little bit of mayonnaise, just a mayo, very neutral, so that way it doesn't take over the taste of the beautiful lobster meat. I'm gonna add a little, tiny little bit of yogurt. It's just natural, thick Greek yogurt. And I like to use a little bit of yogurt and mayonnaise because it lightens it up. It's not just so rich with all that mayonnaise. A little squeeze of some lemon juice. Lemon juice and seafood is wonderful. Brightens it up again. Nice squeeze of the lemon juice. So you can see you have the nice chunks. Really, really nice. A little bit of salt. And I did season the water when I boiled this Oman lobster, but I do want a little bit more and some nice pepper. I'm gonna get some tarragon and the tarragon is very mild and I think it goes really, really well with lobster, so I really enjoy that. Perfect. Now I'm gonna give this a mix up. It's gonna be so nice. I'm probably gonna open a little bottle of wine. I mean, it is a lobster roll after all. So now I have some nice, a nice hot dog bun and it's really soft. And I think that that's a key to a nice lobster roll as well, is to have a soft bun. So these are fresh from the bakery and I've just toasted them a little bit, as you can see, I've charred it. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of butter, a little bit of butter onto that on both sides. Uh -huh. I'll do one and then I will show you. So now I'm gonna get some of that meat, not all of it, I have to save, I have to share, unfortunately. So, we just pile it down like this and spread it out a little bit. And you know, like I said, I didn't put anything else in there. There's no celery, there's no, some people put onions, you know, I have the chive. 
I have a little bit of that tarragon, some pepper, some salt, and I wanna taste that meat. Beautiful. And now I'm just gonna top it with those beautiful chives. Very pretty and beautiful and elegant and succulent. So I'm gonna make the other one and then I'm gonna get ready for my adventure on the Dow Boat Cruise. I cannot wait. more excited to go on this overnight Dow cruise. We are departing from the port of Kassab and the captain himself is escorting me onto this stunning vessel. Dows are traditional Arabic wooden boats that were used for fishing in the old days. We are heading out to the Masamid Fjords for fishing, snorkeling and more. The area has been dubbed the Norway of Arabia because of its spectacular fjord where the mountains jut up from the ocean to 6,500 feet above sea level. Musandam Peninsula is known as the guardian of the Strait of Hormuz. The strait is the only sea passage between the Persian Gulf and the open ocean and is one of the world's most important strategic choke points. That means that we are a mere 15 miles from the Iranian border. This is in an area that has seen intense conflict between Iran and the United States. The crew and the captain were very welcoming, and not long into the fjord, we spotted a village in the mountains. Captain Abdul, we're standing in front of some type of a village. It looks like maybe 12 homes. Is there people living in this village? First, I want to say thank you, President Garcia and Rosanda. Yes, of course. Okay, and uh, actually we are in the fjords called Khorsham or Sham Fjords. Okay. And these fjords have to be five old fishing villages. And normally we come near this, or this village is called Kana Village. Okay. This Kana Village more attractive. There is old house and a new house. Yes. Actually around more than eight or nine family living here. The totally around 50 people or 55 people living in this village. Okay. Every day morning is going to Khasab and afternoon is come back here to the village. Oh, wow. Um, for goods, things like that? The, for goods and sometimes they're going there to Khasab to sell the fish. I Some see. of them are going to work in there in the government and afternoons come here to school. 20% of the children, the students, children, every day is going and come back with them to the, to the village. 80% of the ch students, all of the fjords here, the government offer them accommodation there, they stay free of charge and they go offer them uh, security and full meals to the students. Wow, and that's because if they stay here, they get this, uh, it's a part of the heritage, right? So exactly, and the government also to offer them electricity. If you see the cables through the mountains coming from Khasab to I the see. village. Oh my God, that took a lot of work, uh, I would imagine, to yeah, get them. Yeah, it's a huge work and spend a lot of time to, to re let the electricity to reach to this village. Wow. The, the main of this uh, government offering this to keep the people always stay here in this village. Right. And about the water, before they're using water from the well, 
but uh, because of the we are get less for rain, the water of the wells come a little bit salty. Mm. And the government offer them water by water tank. It's again, weekly they come to fill the tank there for them. Wow, that's amazing. And is it seasonal? Just so my like, it, do they stay there all year round? Because it gets so hot. Even in the summertime, they live there. Actually, the, all of the fjords, all of the fjords and Musandam, the people in the villages stay during the winter time. Yes. The summer, all of them go and living in Khasab. because uh, it's too their, hot. Yeah, yeah, too hot, and they have their own houses there. Ah. Their own cars and everything. They go in there to make maintenance for their boat and the maintenance for their fishing equipment. Right. And and same and the main point they cannot say is too hot. Yeah. The pressure temperature to be between 45 to 50 degrees. Wow. It's beautiful. It's so it's tucked away in the mountains. So amazing. Thank you for taking me to this little spot and uh, pleasure. let's move on, shall we? It's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. It's time to go fishing. And this time, I'm getting into the water with Ronnie, one of the talented crew members. I'm told that Ronnie can do it all, and right now he's leading me snorkeling, where we hope to find a snack. The water is warm and inviting, and the sea life is diverse. I'm feeling safe and relaxed. I'm not seeing the famous Omani lobster. They may be deeper and I didn't bring my diving gear. So Ronnie, we're a little bit dry right now. We just came up from down below and I know we weren't that successful, but we did get two scallops, or should I say, you got two scallops. So I'm gonna ask for some help. How do you shuck these? You just take the knife and yeah. what do you do with it? I need to clean. Yeah? Just here. You break inside? Yeah. yeah. And these are totally edible, right? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna find out in a minute. <laughs> wow, look at that. That's pretty fresh. So now what do you do? Do you have yeah, to I clean to, them? I want to remove. Okay. Be first. Yeah. I think it's gonna be good with some, uh, let me just yeah. get my beer out to the side. And I have uh, a nice lime. So I think a nice squeeze of lime would be beautiful on this. And so this is a scallop here. Yeah, this yeah. is the jewel. Perfect. Are you going to try it with me? Of course. Of course. I like that. Wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. And the inside is such a beautiful color. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of some hot sauce. I might add a little bit of hot sauce to mine. And so let me just taste this. Let's see. Let's get a nice little squeeze of the lime juice down. It's very beautiful. So this would be like a baby sea scallop, I guess. That's what you would call it. So a little drop of the hot sauce. Okay, I'm going in. Let's see. Mmm. Oh my God, they're so sweet. Probably because they're just the baby ones. That's yeah. delicious. I wish we had half a dozen, maybe on our next little swim. And one is for you. And while you're doing that, I'm just gonna make a quick little salad. So I have some chickpeas here, and I love chickpeas. They're really nice in Mediterranean and Arabic, and they use them quite a bit over here in the Middle East. So I have some coriander and cilantro as well. Um, you know chickpeas, of course. You use chickpeas yeah, in a lot of your cooking, right? So some nice fresh cilantro down. And I'm gonna get some more of this lime juice, a nice good squeeze of that so that it covers and coats all of the chickpeas. Get a good squeeze down like that. Oh, this lime is really fresh too. I love it. So this is Omani limes as well. And I'm going to get a nice dash of this hot sauce because I like a lot of heat. And then I'm going to put some chat masala and it's a masala mixture. Masala basically means different spices. So there's some coriander, some cumin, some chilies. There's all kinds in masala, right? Yeah. And this is chat masala. Are you familiar with this one? Yeah, you know this one? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And there's so much flavors going on. So just coat that, put that into the chickpeas. And again, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more heat. I always say just a little bit goes a long way. So a little dash of that. And of course, I need to add a little bit of salt. And these are quite salty though, they're delicious. Mm. I really love that, how wonderful to go down and get your, 
your lunch or a little appetizer. So that's fabulous. And just mix it all up. So you have the lime juice and the chat masala, and you have the chickpeas, some salt, some chili, and of course that beautiful lime juice. So it just coats it beautifully. And I have the fresh cilantro. So you have a nice little punch of some herby greenness going into it as well. This is perfect, it's coated. And are you gonna try your scallop? Because if you're not gonna yeah. eat it, I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is delicious. I love this one. So fresh, so delicious. Mmm. And on this beautiful dao boat, that is fabulous, and it's got that right punch of heat that I'm looking for. This is delicious. So uh, this one's yeah, for I you, sir. Right. Yep. You want some lemon? Yeah. Okay. I some or some lime? Oh wait, you got three. Look, yeah. there's more for me. You have made my day today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm, oh my god, they are so delicious. That's wonderful. Mmm, thank you. The captain is taking me fishing now, so we're boarding his tender to see if the barracuda are biting. So, Captain, we are fishing for hopefully a barracuda, right? Yeah. And how big are they? <laughs> Because uh, Max, uh, different size. We help. We, normally we catch here one meter, one half meter. Oh wow! Uh, so and so, the, I'm holding the line. If I feel one, I should maybe let go because maybe. So when you feel something, uh, yeah. catch it. You have to tell us the, the other person. He will pull that. Okay, okay. Because it'd be heavy. Cannot. Uh, yeah. Pull it. And so we're just trawling around. We're not going to stop. We're just going around. Around, running around this area. Okay. Normally we. Uh, this area has many barracudas. Okay. Here. Wow. Well, I hope I get one. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Wow. He's. Oh yeah. He's strong. Pull it. Pull it. Okay. <laughs> Come here. Come here, fishy, fishy. Oh wow. Look. Okay. You shot that it. Oh wow. Cool. It's a barracuda. Ah. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Ronnie, no food for you tonight. <laughs> wow, look at the jellyfish. It's so beautiful. Yay, barracuda. Number two. Ronnie, I'll take it in this time. <laughs> I'm only joking. Will it? Yeah. Careful. Okay. Oh yeah, it's coming, I see it. Uh, uh, uh. I think our lines are crossed. I'm pulling, I'm pulling. <laughs> oh yeah, there he is. I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. Come on, baby. Whoa! Uh, yes, please. Oh, oh. Wow! <laughs> Yay! Holy barracuda! Oh no! Be careful for your feet. Okay. Wow. One barracuda! <laughs> Dinner is looking good tonight. <laughs> My first time fishing barracuda was a success. We caught eight in total, but we only kept one. It's time to head back to the Dow to freshen myself up, clean the fish, and prepare for dinner. So we are back on the boat with our cat the beautiful barracuda. It was an amazing experience. We have charcoal going and we're going to barbecue this later, but first it has to be cleaned. And I have a lovely gentleman that's going to help me to clean it today. Um, so I'm going to let him do his stuff. He is a genius with this, but I think I'm going to help him out a little bit and chop off the head. Okay, I can do that for you. All right, so if you want to help me, put it up on the side like that and I'm going to go right down through. Thank you, beautiful barracuda today. It was so powerful and so strong. This barracuda really put up a really good fight. Now I'll put this off to the side and I'm gonna let you do your business here. 
It's gonna be so delicious. I don't plan on putting any seasoning, no fancy sauces. This is fresh out of the ocean. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. And it's very big. It's such a powerful fish. Scale it, there you go. Scales are never, <laughs> they're going in my hair. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we're almost done scaling now, yes? Okay, it's finished. And now are you going to open it up? Yes. And take the innards out? Okay. Beautiful, look at it. Wow, you did a really good job. Off with its tail. Want me to hold it? Thank you. You're welcome. Beautiful. Hang on. I'll get this out of the way. So we're going to fillet it. That's perfect. There we go. That's lovely. Okay. Yes. Perfect. So that's a beautiful, beautiful, large fillet of this barracuda that we caught. So we're gonna get to the other side. The barbecue is going, the charcoal is hot. And when we come back, we're gonna put it on. It's gonna be absolutely stunning here on the Ruba boat tonight. Schools of friendly dolphins visit the shores of Oman in large numbers, with many making Musamdan Fjord home. Of course, it's never a guarantee that you will see them but I'm delighted that we saw many. The captain was quick to point out that they were Indian Ocean Dolphins. The Musamdam Fjord is also frequented by sharks, turtles, and my all-time favorite, manta rays. Okay, so we are back and we have this beautiful barracuda that we've just filleted and it's ready to go on this scorching hot grill. So as you can see, my assistant here has it all ready. I'm just gonna put a little bit of seasoning on it. I didn't say I was putting spices. Seasoning are not spices. Salt and pepper is a must for everything. So I'm gonna put it on this, okay, Ronnie? Yep. Careful. Just like that. Okay. Perfect. And give a generous amount because it's quite large, right? And I also have a nice lemon or lime, um, they call them lemons over here, but I still say they're limes. So I'm gonna get that down on top of the grill as well. And while our fish are going, the limes are going to be nice and juicy and caramelized, and we're gonna squeeze that down. So again, with some nice salt, generous amount of that salt over our beautiful fresh barracuda that we caught just an hour ago. Uh, a little bit more on there? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. You got my back today, Ronnie. Okay. And I think it's ready. You want to yeah. rub it in a little bit or you think it's good to go? Yeah. Good to go. Here, let me help you. Okay. 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 Once again. Here we go. Oops. Yeah. And this is so hot. Yeah, we should cook it very fast. It will cook very fast, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And we don't want to overcook it as well, right? Yep. Perfect. So we're going to let that go for a little bit. Ronnie, how often do you catch the barracuda here? Not every day. Right. When I have the three, uh, two nights, three days, we have, this is actually favorite, but we have three, three nights, four days also trip. Yeah. Same time we do this one, the barracuda. So but you do the barracuda yeah. all the time, every every couple of days, yeah. but not every day. Not every day. You don't want to overfish, obviously. I don't want to overfish. Oh, well, that's really, really good. <laughs> I'm a supporter of that. So, um, and they're really powerful, and you don't catch too many of them. And also some red snapper, different whatever. You don't use nets, so that's very important. No, we don't use net. Right, and I totally agree with that. So, again, you're not depleting the numbers of the barracuda or the other fish that you're catching here. So we're gonna let this go for a couple of minutes. Isn't this beautiful? It takes up the whole grill. Like this barracuda is yeah. quite large. Yeah. Do you catch larger barracudas, just wondering? Or is this a typical size barracuda? Uh, Sometimes one and a half meters also. One barracuda. and a half meters. Yeah. Wow, because this one put up quite a fight and that's not one and a half meters. <laughs> I think my fingers would be gone if it was a one and a half meter barracuda. So, but this is beautiful and it's going to feed a lot of us here tonight. So let's just let this go for a couple of minutes and uh, yeah, we'll come back to this beautiful barracuda dinner tonight. 
Ronnie, what do you think? I think this one is, is done. Done. Okay, so let's take this one off because I cannot wait any longer. Yeah. <laughs> and we certainly don't want this barracuda okay. to overcook. So I have a beautiful plate here for this. Yep. And we can let the other one go. But in the meantime, you yep. and I can have a little taste of this beautiful barracuda. Please. I can hold. You can hold it, sure, please. please. And I, yeah, I'm not going to forget about that beautiful lemon or lime, whichever they call it, and squeeze it down. See how beautiful that is? So now you know a new trick when you do the fish. If you cut it open and put the lemon or the lime on the grill, the juice is caramelized, so delicious. Yeah. If it goes into the water like that, then that's fine because the fish can. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. The fish are gonna have a little tart treat tonight. So I also have a nice fork yeah, yeah. for you. So can you handle this? Of course. So we can both taste it. Yep. Perfect. Look, cheers, my friend. Cheers. Thank you for helping me catch this beautiful barracuda today. Lovely in these waters. I feel so lucky. It is. Mm. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, that's so fresh. No. This is my first time having barracuda. Mm. Oh wow, so delicious. Wow, I'm a lover of barracuda. Okay, so we don't want this one to overcook. Yeah. Wait. Let's get this one off ASAP because yeah. I need more of this beautiful barracuda. Next morning, we make our way back to Kassab. I had such a peaceful sleep. Without phones or internet, it wasn't hard to imagine why. Another school of dolphins appeared magically, as if to say goodbye. Being on board a traditional Omani Dao boat in the famous Strait of Hermuse was breathtaking and truly memorable experience.